and places and people can trigger a lot of things for me. So I know okay, so, to stay so away. So my, my concern, my concern in terms of triggers, is related to uh, your behavior with young people, oh, with minors. Okay. So, so that's kind of the trigger that I'm looking for. For those triggered against against them from places where, where where like younger people go to like parks, I know that I can't go there because those kind of triggers with with in, not in, I guess in tight being like an enticement. So I know not to go there if the thought even goes into my mind to redirect myself to other things, to other the hobbies that I have, to to other areas to do things. Like you know, instead of to say going, say I have an idea or a thought. Okay, I want to go to a park, redirect myself to do other things, to other places, to find other hobbies to keep myself occupied. This Florida man uh, was arrested and locked up for doing the worst to a child while visiting a friend in Connecticut. But don't worry, he has a low risk score. And obviously, he's very, you know, he's got everything under control if they release him after serving just four years for what he did. Well, we'll unpack it at the end. Inmate number for the record. Jason Zaffron, four two eight six eight seven. Thank you, Mr. Zaffron. Um, and so this is hearing being conducted in consideration of the parole application for Mr. Jason Zaffron, inmate number four two eight six eight seven who's serving a total effective sentence of 10 years execution suspended after five years, um, followed by 10 years probation for the charge of sexual assault in the third degree. As of today, records reflect the parole eligibility date of the 29th of April, 2024. This is at 50% eligibility. There is no victim input in this case. Um, there is an offender accountability plan for this offender. It has been reviewed and shows that the offender has completed on the sex treatment program and apparently continues participating in vocational education programming, computer science. He remains on the Department of Correctional Waiting List for education, five or seven day job assignment, vocational, and voices. And this is according to the RT3M's query. Um, utilizing the statewide collaborative risk evaluation system, the offender's overall score on the SRT falls within the low range of risk for recidivism. Utilizing the static 99R, the offender's overall score for sexual offense recidivism falls within the low range. All right, Mr. Zachary, this is now your opportunity to express to the board why you believe you should be granted parole. You may begin. Can I use my paper? Yes. Yes. To read from? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I feel uh, being incarcerated has made me realize how much psychological, emotional, as well as mental damage I unnecessarily caused the victim to endure through, no, through my own fault, which I take full responsibility for and offer my deepest, sincerest, and heartfelt apologies for causing her undue pain, something she, the victim definitely did not deserve. Being here and taking the track one program, I was able to talk to open my eyes and help me understand the impact I had through the victim's eyes. Talking about it, writing as well as reading, what I wrote gave me a clearer understanding of how much pain you can cause the victim to suffer. The more I talked about it and read about it, the worse I felt. The more I cried, the more I realized I hurt an innocent kid who did nothing wrong. Yeah. Being here also has helped me have time to reflect on what I, the crime that I committed and how much you can, another person can be hurt by your, by my own faults, by not thinking clearly, by not taking steps to prevent anything like this from happening, by not seeking the, the appropriate counseling, which was available to me through the VA, through different resources that I had available. At that, I make no excuses for my actions, nor will I because it is wrong and will be very disrespectful to the victim. Also, I should have at that point in time really taken a step back and used all the source of resources that I had, including my family, which I didn't. I wasn't thinking clearly, which is no excuse for my actions. And no, I make an attempt to make an excuse 
because that is just wrong and inappropriate and very, very disrespectful. I know that if the parole board does grant my release, they will, you will not regret it. I'll not cause any problems. I will abide by any and all stipulations. I do not want any trouble. And I will continue to live the same life I did for the past eight and a half years, which was quiet and low key, supported by my family, my support system, and my doctors and specialists at the VA. <laughs> Excuse me. Furthermore, furthermore, my wife will be with me. I will have an aide as the doctors do not want me to be by myself because I have an uh, amnesia disorder. Sometimes I wander off and don't know where I am. So I'll have somebody with me. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I can't drive. So going up, being mobile is not an option for me. But I know that what I did was wrong in every every way, in every facet, and something that can never and no ever happen again because it's not who I am nor who I want to be seen as, and it will not be the narrative which my story is not fully yet written. People can change and will change. That will be the proof that that can happen. When I was in 19, 2017, no one, some family members didn't think that I can actually go back to this college at 47, and I proved them wrong. And I will, and I want to prove again that I can and will make the right decisions and live the life that a regular person can live with the disabilities that I have. I know that the war will not be will not be regretted, will not have to worry about me doing the same or any other type of crime, because that is not in me, nor will it ever will be. I plan on seeing my mental health therapist on a regular. His name is Dr. Ozo, and he I can call him or see him anytime I need to at the VA clinic. Is that it, Mr. Zafrin? Yes. All right. right. Well, thank you very much for your opening statement. You covered a lot of ground there. Um, what we're going to do is uh, we've read about uh, your past before you got here, what you've accomplished since you've been inside. We're going to ask some questions so that we can arrive at your suitability for parole. And then uh, we're going to talk about your case and give you a decision. OK. All right. And uh, we're going to start questions today with board member Rodriguez. Good morning, Mr. Zaff. Good morning, sir. How are you feeling today? Um, oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, first, of all, first of all, I appreciate your statement, uh, and I appreciate the remorse you reflected in the statement, um, which I didn't get a sense of, I'm going to be honest with you, and the documents that I read about you and about this case. So. Um, it seems to me that on some level, you've begun to kind of um, get some insight into your behavior and to the impact of your behavior on on its victims, on its victim. Um, so I and I appreciate that. Um, can you just can you just and I know I I don't, I don't want you to struggle too much with this because um, you seem to be doing some good things in therapy. You've taken the sex offender. Uh, therapy and, and uh, program, right? I want you to share with me uh, some of the triggers that you learned about and how you'll be able to contain those triggers if you're released. Some things that triggers I learned about are people, meaning being like around large crowds of people and certain places which can trigger things for me and times of certain times when I can and cannot go out where I can and cannot go and when I can and cannot go. The triggers, I know how to keep them under control because as I know that there's certain days or certain times or places that if I go, it could have a huge impact on me, not just because of my crime, but because of my issues, the neural lot, neural lot, these. Yeah, I got, I got, I got you. You're neurological. 
Yes, thank you. Yes. And I'm afraid that if I go, I can fall and hit my head. And that could be very bad. Yeah, I, I worry a lot about those. So I know I have to be very careful of when I go, where I go and why I go out. So I being around those kind of places and people can trigger a lot of things for me. So I know okay, so, to stay so away my, my concern, my concern in terms of triggers is related to uh, your behavior with young people. Oh, with bikers. Okay. So, so that's kind of the trigger that I'm looking for. And I understand you're looking for some other things related to your physical um, condition, condition, situation. Um, I'm just more, more concerned about the triggers around, you know, how, what, how you got involved in this to begin with, which was very serious, right? Yes. <laughs> your defense and, and the impact, you shared it, the impact on the victim is probably going to be lifelong yes. um, in this particular case. Um, because not only you know was there an act, but there was a rejection after that. So you know, so the impact may be even more significant than we can all even think about or realize. I, I definitely so, agree. So, so, so in that, in light of that, what what are those triggers that you're concerned about that you feel you have uh, kind of figured out and and would be able to deal with on the outside? And I realize that you're going to have a lot of additional supervision on the outside based on your uh, condition. For those triggers, it's, it's again, same from places where, where, where like younger people go to like parks. I know that I can't go there because those kind of triggers with, with in, not in, I guess, in tight, being like an enticement. So I know not to go there. If the thought even goes into my mind to redirect myself to other things, to other the hobbies that I have, to, to other areas to do things like you know instead of to say going say I've an idea or a thought okay I want to go to a park redirect myself to do other things to other places to find other hobbies to keep myself occupied for me the biggest thing is keeping myself occupied if I'm occupied then other thoughts do not enter my mind it's like reading sports or watching sports or going to like baseball games things to keep myself yeah. occupied I'm occupied my triggers are pretty much under control because I'm doing something to keep my mind busy. So when I'm not busy, my mind tends to wander and go off on its own. Um, no. on its own, it own sounds, okay, uh, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, it, it sounds as if you've got also have some, um, because of your particular situation, that there's already some programming outside of, if you do get released, outside of where you are. That you're going to be involved with. Oh, def most definitely. Has that been has that been arranged? Yes, um, I, my doctor in the VA, the mental health doctor, is going to uh, see me also, and I talk to him. But not now because we're not. I'm not allowed to because it's not through corrections. But I was yeah. seeing him before I came in, and he was very helpful. I would talk about my case and my charges, so I will continue to see him. And if you're and if you are required to attend additional programming if released, how will you be able to get to those to that programming since you're not able to drive, correct? Yes, yeah, so my my social worker and my fiduciary will set up transportation. I didn't know that I have that available. So I have transportation that they'll bring me to my appointments. Okay. And then I can take me there and they'll make sure I go there only and then come back. Another trigger that I have to concern with is being like on like large crowds where people gather, but then my head starts to turn and then I start getting ridiculous and excusable thoughts. So I know stay away from those things too, because again, if I'm occupied, doing the other things to keep me occupied, like I like to read, I know these books sound weird, it sounds kind of geeky, but I like to read about like um, UFOs and stuff. If I'm keeping myself occupied with those kind of books and reading, my mind doesn't wander, it focuses on one thing. I know it's weird and geeky, and but it's an interesting. It's fine, it's fine, it's reading. Uh, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your answer. Uh, just one couple of other things. Uh, you haven't taken voices yet. No, I, I tried what? 10 times. I tried 14 times. I, mean, I begged them and I pleaded and I asked them if I can please take it on my own. But each of the 14 times they told me, no, not yet. And I tried in Osborne on June 22nd, 
2022 all the way until January this year. And they, I keep being told no. But if the board says I can go home, then I would sign up right away and I will go and send papers to show that I sent, that I am there and I am taking active the classes. I tried to take it 14 times, but each time the, the, thou told me no. Yeah. Well, that may be something you may want to continue to advocate for if you can. Um, the other thing is, because you have no, you have no disciplinary reports. No. And how did you manage to do that? I, I can carry myself the same way here as I do at home. Quiet, professional, so respectful, courteous towards everybody, no matter who it is. Just the same way I'm at home. I'm respectful with everyone. I'm pleasant, but not overly pleasant. I'm cordial, but not overly cordial. And I'm but I read and watch TV and call my family. And yeah. that's pretty much how I am at home. And you were, you were in military service, so thank you so much for your service. Thank you. All right. Uh, I don't. I don't have a whole lot of other questions at this point. Um, you've done done pretty well with your education. You've you know worked to try to get your degree in. Yes. Yeah. You've done very well. I don't have any additional questions, Mr. Chairman. I have no other questions at this point. Listen. Thank you so much for answering my questions, and I hope things go very well for you in terms of your condition, and I hope it all gets you know gets taken care of. Or whatever whatever happens today. Thank you. Dark. Uh, good morning, sir. So just tell me out. So uh, I see that you you still uh, you know get services through the VA, but you you want a halfway house either in Waterbury or Norwich. Is that yes. correct? Yes, sir. So were you using the VA prior yes, to your sir. incarceration where in West Haven or Newington? No, my VA was in Fort Lauderdale on Commercial Boulevard. I live in Florida. I used to, I live in Florida. Oh, okay. Uh, explain something else. So you talked about your support system, uh, about your wife. What, why, when did you go back and live with your wife? I, I was, we were going to go back to Florida. But I didn't want any any problems with the parole board, so her and I decided to stay out here because okay. we wanted to avoid any trouble. I don't want any problems, any any issues with anyone, so we decided to stay out here instead of going back there to avoid any problems. All right, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Board member Rodriguez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Well, um, Mr. Zaffron, although he hasn't taken voices has acknowledged responsibility for his actions, has been remorseful and uh, apologized to the victim. This was a very uh, serious offense. This was an adopted daughter this happened with. And then he ran, and then he rejected her, ran out, tried to run out. And, and so in that case, in that sense, it was very, very serious. But he did uh, express remorse during his statement, or accepted responsibility during the statement. Uh, he seems to have a plan around his therapy on the outside. He's talked about his uh, social worker and stuff, being able to take him to the therapy sessions. I believe uh, he would be attending his problem sexual behavior in the community if released today. Um, I would be supportive of granting Mr. Zaffron his discretionary parole today. Board Member Darden. Yes, so, you know, there are a lot of things we looked at, right? This is first period of incarceration. He really didn't get in trouble with the law until like right prior to this this offense, right? And so you're trying to figure out what was going on in their in their fifties or late forties. Uh, I'm on the same page though with my colleague as far as uh, writing and uh, he has you know ten years of probation to follow. So that's why I asked him why do I go back with his wife. He he, he could still. You know, if he wants to uh, try to go back to Florida, but you know, right now he stayed at what he wants to do. Yeah, I mean that's not a that's not an issue in the pro board. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that you would want to talk to the pro board. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I have halfway house uh, PSP, no contact with my without pro board information. Enhanced internet device monitoring. Is that you know. Uh, I just, that's the question. 
more than that. I didn't think about that, but I didn't. I, I, I wasn't convinced of anything that I read. Okay. So PSP, no contact. No contact with Jay. Jay Z. So we got. Yeah. Yeah. In regard to Jason's effort for 28687, I will grant parole on or after uh, April 29th. Is that what you said? What's the best way? Uh, April 29th, 2024. April 29th, 2024, with the following stipulations. Uh, halfway house placement, community based treatment for problem sexual behavior, no contact with minors without parole loss and permission. And no contact with victim change. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and parole in this uh, case has been granted. Uh, Mr. Zaffron, your uh, stipulations will be explained to you prior to, release, prior to your release. Um, you know, go out there and do the right thing. And uh, what I didn't get a chance to say, but Mr. Rabbit just did as well, is uh, thank you for your service to our country. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, this concludes this hearing for Mr. Jason Zafrin, 428687. Oh, you know, these hearings would be funny if they weren't so terrifying. It's like, well, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do when you get out? Uh, to make sure this doesn't happen again. Well, I'm 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 not going to go to parks because I I get triggered in parks, and I'm I'm not going to go out where there are people, aka children, because I get triggered around that. And I'll just keep my mind busy. I'll watch sports and 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 I'll do stuff to make sure that I don't do this again. Do you know what he did? He's uh, he's from Florida. He was visiting friends in Connecticut when he uh, well when he sexually assaulted a 15 year old girl, 50 years old at the time. He was charged with third degree sexual assault, enticing a minor, and a sex act, Ill uh, an illegal sexual consent contact. This is full on sexual assault of a minor. Police said that he was visiting the victim's family when he managed to get the girl alone. They said he pinned her against the wall and told her he wanted to have a baby. He wanted her to have his baby is exactly what he said. He then told the girl, there are two ways this is going to happen. One, willingly, or two, I will take everything away from you until it become willingly, police said. Police said Zafrin then began fondling and kissing the girl. This is a 15-year-old child. She's doing whatever a 15-year-old child does when this monster shows up and does that. The trauma. The, and he gets a 10-year sentence, although five is suspended. And uh, after 2018, 19, 2021, he gets four years. And what do you hear? A low risk score. Who's surprised? I mean, come on. Why? Like, uh, it's kind of a low risk score because there's like obviously a low chance that he's ever going to hurt another child. It's so clear because, you know, I, I know that we don't have the PhDs from Harvard or Yale or whatever. I know that we're not that smart. I know that, you know, we can just trust that this man probably never had um you know these type of feelings before pedia you know feelings for children i'm sure that he i'm sure that he now with his knowledge and programming that he will avoid um um public places he will avoid going anywhere where where people might be parks and things like that and for the next i don't know however many years he lives if it's another 20 30 40 he'll be fine It's like, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't want to say I'm going back to my wife just because, you know, I didn't want to make any problems with parole. I wonder what type of research they do. Do they do they take the time to say, well, may, may, maybe his wife actually doesn't 
want anything to do with him. Maybe she's like in midst of filing a divorce. I mean, I, I don't I don't feel that they put in their goal is to parole um in Connecticut. That's what I do feel. Now we we would have seen this parole probably anywhere. That's just the bottom line. Um, but think about that. That you serve four year sentence for doing that. Uh, I mean, we're not surprised. We've seen it. We've seen it so many times. It is what it is. Anyways, thank you, Richard, for the info. And with that, I'll let you go.